Good evening, everybody, and uh, thank you, Jerry, and thank you, Joe. I'm really pleased to be here, and um, I kind of guess in, um, on a panel like this that somebody who is speaking for the arts, not speaking last, is almost a first. So I, I do appreciate that. Um, art, I believe, gives a muscle to society that it doesn't get from anything else. We should pay attention to what history struggles to teach us, that each successive version of the future as it arrives was once considered unimaginable. Except that, buried back there in the narrative, there is always an artist who imagined it more or less as it turned out to be. That is why it is necessary for our society to invest in the imagination, the human power that enables us to make the great leap from the world we think we know into the world as it will be in all its mystery and surprise. Dig where you stand is an old Zen injunction, wise and useful. So, of course, our thinking must start from here, from the home place, but it cannot end here. An Irish poet can now expect to be read and published across the world in her original language and in translation. She may, like Ivan Boland, spend part of her life abroad as a university teacher. Um, other artists work as writers in residence, artists in residence in far-flung places. They can ex certainly expect to give readings of their work anywhere from Bunbeg to Beijing. More than this, though, she and he will have readers all across the world by virtue of the explosive growth of social media. What is true of poets is true of all artists and writers. We live now in a world of complex and far-reaching interconnections. We must think of investment in the arts as providing a platform in Ireland for artists who will increasingly draw a world audience. Irish filmmakers, music, musicians, actors, painters, as well as our writers, are already making their way in this very cosmopolitan world of instant access, multiple presences that the technology makes possible. We can confidently expect that as yet unseen developments will further collapse distance insofar as the reach of art goes. It is literally impossible to calculate the reputational value that accrues to Ireland by virtue of our work in the arts. But it is possible to say it is already huge and will certainly grow into the future, if the state keeps faith with its artists. We should be acutely, acutely aware that such globalisation has its dangers as well as its opportunities. And the principal one, from our point of view, is that we will risk breaking the ancient and vital connection between a people and its artists. The downgrading of investment in the arts that we have seen in recent years is perhaps a sign that government is not completely aware of the consequences of breaking that connection. Our task is to persuade them otherwise. The fact is, our artists have always been the awkward squad in the body politic, and it is this very awkwardness that makes them invaluable. Our artists bring us turbulence, liveliness, positive, creative unease. They challenge and provoke us, they take our common inheritance and they make it new. They draw on tradition in order to break away from it. They dare constantly to imagine what has not yet been imagined. They show us ourselves in all our rich and varied humanity and they remind us constantly of who we really are and more importantly, who we really want to be. It seems to me only common sense that a small and economically vulnerable society like ours should pay particular attention to nourishing and fostering the creative industries. Industries that can be sustained indefinitely into the future while remaining based in Ireland. Industries where the value-added component remains in Ireland. It seems to me equally a matter of common sense that what inspires and feeds into the creative industries sector is a healthy and vibrant arts community. The Irish macroeconomic model is heavily dependent on attracting multinational industries to our island. These industries are volatile, ruthless, and highly mobile. We can count on them remaining here only so long as they cannot make greater profits elsewhere. Last week at the National Economic Dialogue, um, Minister Noonan asked us to come up with suggestions for building capacity for the future in Ireland. I offer one modest response. There is a fantastic ability to build capacity in the arts, the creative industries, and in the production of ideas here in Ireland. 
It makes sense to develop a strategy for growth that draws heavily on these indigenous resources, on the imaginative capacities we have in abundance, on our still strong sense of mutual loyalty, above all, of loyalty to our home place, our home community. In developing such a strategy, we have much to learn from our entrepreneurial artists who have chosen to make their lives here, from our arts organisations who offer a return on state investment of an order of magnitude greater than almost any other agency can boast, and who have between them do, done so much to foster that community solidarity, which is the only reliable basis for a viable future on our island. Our artists do not stand outside history in some kind of reserved sacred space. They are our families. They are with us. They are beside us, walking the same streets, suffering the same vicissitudes, laughing, dancing, and suffering with us. The truth and the tenor of the times that we live through together will always mark the work of every artist, sometimes directly, sometimes at a slant, but all art, one way or another, comes out of a world we share. And of course, that world is also being shaped by the art it nurtures, encourages, and produces. All art participates in history, in society, in the human condition, and all art contributes to shaping and challenging these. If Ireland over the next few decades is to grow and mature into a, an even more confident republic, a republic of values and of tolerance, we need to consider how best to ensure that the vital role that artists play in our lives is protected and is provided for. If we fail to provide a home for our next generation of artists, a society and a context where their work is appreciated, where they can make a living, where they are valued uh, as, they, as an integral vital element in our growth and life as a people, then we will lose them to a wider world that will more than happily accommodate them and we will be vastly the poorer for that loss. We are all in favour of travel, for making ourselves actively open to other traditions, other sources of inspiration, and our Irish artists are already living, valued, and uh, admired presences in other places, in other traditions. And of course, this is a two-way process. Japanese, Greek, Russian, American artists equally have access to our traditions, to, um, to the rich depths of our cultural inheritance and living practice. Nevertheless, and this isn't really a paradox, even though it seems like one, we cannot be at home in the wider world if we are not first at home in our own place. I passionately wish that in the near future, as we leave this crossroads, Ireland will make a deep and principled commitment to our, our artists in all disciplines, the emerging, the, the established and the yet to emerge. I particularly desire that we make a thoroughgoing commitment to the work that will inevitably come from the rich fusion of Irish and immigrant cultures that is already happening on our island. I hope that we become a republic animated by the classical values of liberty, equality, fraternity and sorority, and that to these guiding precepts we add the value of the imagination. We declare and enact our deepest humanity, our sense of history, of community, in acts of the imagination. We need to reflect this truth and these values in the institutions and in institutional practices, certainly in the investment practices of the state. All those who strove to create um, Ireland's new republic were animated by a vision of who we yet might be. They were inspired not by the ambition of bankers, nor by the cold calculation of profit, but by songs, visions, plays, poems and stories that said, first and foremost, we are no mean people. We imagined ourselves a republic then, and however imperfect it has been, battered, betrayed, and besieged as it may be, we have a republic yet, but we can make it better, broader, deeper, and more just. We can imagine ourselves again. Thank you.